Okay, we are starting with objective questions. Uh, civic education. Now, the question says a prerequisite for orderliness. Remember, this question tests your knowledge of uh, orderliness. That is doing things the way it should be done, doing things the proper way. So, a prerequisite for orderliness. What should be there for orderliness to be there? Now, this question also tests your knowledge of forms of orderliness, which among all these options, A says humility, B says morality, C says hard work, D says politeness. Actually, politeness is a form of orderliness, which is the correct answer. Now, the next question says, national symbols are referred to a symbol of national worth. Now, this question tests your knowledge of national symbols. Of course, you, there are those symbols that can be used to identify or recognize a nation. There are symbols that are specific to a particular nation. Now, in Nigeria, you talk about things like the coat of arms, you talk about the national pledge, you talk about national anthem, you talk about our currency, you talk about um, our constitution. Some of those things are peculiar. To Nigeria, even the flag is there. So now the question national symbols are also referred to as symbols of national A cooperation, B identity, C unity, D development. Actually, the answer because we say those symbols used to identify so that national symbols of national identity. So I, you identify a nation which is not cooperation, is no unity, neither is it symbol or national symbol of development now this question <coughs> law of libel or defamation of character violates right to freedom of what now this question tests your knowledge on one um, limitations to human rights now remember when we talk about libel you're talking about writing any false or unproven statement that defames the character of a person. The other part of it is slander. When you make an oral statement that is not proven, that defames the character of a person. So now, which the law of libel defames which character? Remember, we're talking about saying or writing. In the case of libel, writing. Now, it violates your right. Uh, A says, as if fair hearing no you're not talking about hearing here as it be religion it has nothing to do with religion is it expression is it association it's not a, it's about expression because it is in the course of expression that you can commit libel that is right something that defames or false information or unproven information that defames the character of another particular another person so when you do that the law that forbids you to do that affects your freedom of expression so that is why c as the answer now this question says who among the following is not a foremost nigerian nationalist now when we talk about foremost nigerian nationalist there are many names that come to our mind names like habar macaulay nandi azikiwe Bafemi Awolo, Ahmad uh, Bello, um, talk about SL um, Akintola, and the rest of them. So <coughs> if you look at Stafa Belewa, is there. Now, A says Sir Abubakar Stafa Belewa. Remember, he is the first Prime Minister of Nigeria from the day of independence. So he's one of our foremost. Dr. Nandajikiwe, of course, is a name when we talk about nationalists in Nigeria. Now, if you look at D, this says Chief Obafemi Awolowo. Of course, he was the leader of the action group. So he's one of the foremost uh, nationalists in Nigeria. But Jeff Nayakubu Gowon, this name came in and came to the limelight of Nigerian politics as the second military head of state. And that is uh, in 1966, in July 1966. So he, as an odd person here, is not among the foremost nationalists in Nigeria. Now, this question, the major reason for the enactment of traffic regulations is to, 
Now, the definition of traffic regulation says that those are rules, guidelines set up by the government for road users to ensure safety on the road and the smooth flow of, tra um, of traffic. Now, this definition defines the two major reasons, safety on the road and the uh, smooth flow of traffic on the road. Now, um, A says, make sure people travel for business purpose. It's not in our definition. B, arrest traffic offenders or violators. It's a means to achieve that end. C, ensure safety and allow smooth flow of traffic. This is in our definition of traffic uh, regulation. It can be ensure the uh, sustenance and longevity of roads. No, it's about ensure safety and allow easy flow of traffic. So C is the answer. Now, a basic responsibility of parent is, now this question takes your knowledge of responsible parenthood. That is the process of effective discharge of duties of parents to the children and the words of the parents. Now, is A, providing necessities of life for the children. B, buying expensive gifts for the ch children. C, sending the children abroad for quality education. D, visiting the um, visiting site of attraction with the children. Now, is visiting site of attraction with the children is not a basic, must not, it's not a must. C says sending the children abroad for quality education is not everybody that can afford. And even those that can afford can have reason not to do that. B says buying expensive gifts for the children is not a basic responsibility of a responsible parent or a parent, but the basic is providing necessities of life for the children. Necessity of life, talk about basic needs, food, shelter, clothing, then social education, health, um, um, health facilities for the child. So this is the answer A. Now this question says, the attitude that prevents peaceful resolution of intercommunal conflict is. Now, <clears throat> you see that if you look at the options, you see that the most or the three of them are method of conflict resolution, peaceful settlement of conflict. One is not. Now, conciliation is <coughs> alternative dispute resolution method. It's a method of resolving conflict where a third party is involved to make the parties in conflict see reason to reconcile. Now, C says dialogue. Roundtable discussion between the warring parties. Now, this is mediation, which is, um, is involving a neutral uh, third party to mediate the conflict by giving advice that will aid in peaceful settlement of this point. Now, resentment, which is showing anger or disgust or ill feeling about, is not a method of peaceful settlement of intercommunal conflict. Now, this passage, use the passage below to answer the question. It is a common practice for youth of Upe village to meet every Saturday on the month of the month to build a proposed structure. Through this practice, they have successfully built a monumental market complex which attracts people from neighboring villages. Now, the question says, the zeal shown by the youths of Upe village is a manifestation of what? Now, this thing tests your knowledge of the first topic you did in SS1, which is uh, about values. And uh, <coughs> if you look at the values we talked about, now, town planning. Yes, they may be doing something related to town planning by setting up structure, but it's not a manifestation of what we're talking about. Now, a, a national development, it can contribute to national development. Now, it's not, of course, political participation, rather, it's community service. Remember, when we talk about community service, we talk about selfless activities of uh, the people 
uh, and selfless services of the people to boost the development of their community. So it's community service. Now question nine says use the passage to answer the question. It is a common practice for the use of Ope village to meet every last Saturday of the month to build a proposed structure. Through this practice, they have successfully built a monumental market complex which attracts people from neighboring villages. Now, the youth who took part in the various building projects in Ope village are said to be, is it reliable somehow? Is it self-reliant? Remember, this is a combined work. So is it hardworking? Yes, they must be hardworking to have done the bit. Because we are dealing with community service, it's selfless, they're selfless. They're not doing it to benefit, to specially benefit, but they're doing it for the interest of the community. They're making sacrifice in the interest of the community. So they are selfless. Now, this question says, which of the following sets of agencies are responsible for checking roadworthiness of vehicles? Now, um, roadworthiness of vehicle is just about checking whether the vehicle is worthy to use the road safe. It is safe for this vehicle to be put on the road to use the road. Now, there are two agencies in Nigeria established to actually check that can check roadworthiness of vehicles. Now, this says I'm starting from the Nigerian Army and Vehicle Inspection Office. Nigerian Army it's not their duty. Vehicle inspection office, it is their core duty. But because Nigerian Army is there, it can be the answer. Now, C says Federal Road Safety Corps and uh, the Nigerian Army. Now, it is also the duty of Federal Road Safety Corps because they are responsible for ensuring safety on the road, they enforce road safety. So, but because Nigerian Army is there, this cannot be the answer. B says the police and uh, National Security and Civil Defense Corps. Now, it's not the answer, it's not their duty. But A, we say the Federal Road Safety Corps and uh, the Vehicle Inspection Office is actually the answer. These are the two agencies that can inspect or check the roadworthiness of a vehicle. <clears throat> now, which of the following may not be vested with a constitution authority? that may not be vested with an authority. Now, <coughs> we, it does create, have an authority. Now, a family has authority. C, a school has authority. Of course, you can see the principal, you can see the edge of school. The state has an authority, you can see the government, you can see the president. Now, a mob does not have an authority. Remember, a mob is a spontaneous group they are usually violent in nature, that disperses as soon as their aim is achieved. You normally see a mob when <clears throat> there is jungle justice. Maybe a thief stole something, and a group of people gather, beat the person, and disperse after achieving that aim. So that is mob. There is no constituted authority in mob. Now, <clears throat> this question says, an individual who finds it difficult to do without the intake of prohibited substances is, remember when we talk about prohibited substances here, we are referring to drugs. And this topic takes your knowledge on drug use and drug abuse, which is uh, SS2 in SS2. Now, so an individual who finds it difficult to do without an intake a prohibited substance is a human trafficker. No, it's not a human trafficker. A human trafficker is a person that the business is about selling human beings and making money from it. Now, B says armed robber. No, it's not. C says drug addict. D says a kidnapper. The answer is a drug addict. It's a drug addict is someone that cannot control the intake of drugs. So this somebody can do without drugs. So when you get is drug addiction. So which of the following is not a method of recruiting victims for human trafficking? Now it's dealing with your knowledge of human trafficking. How do you get them? Now it says that's how not to get them. That's what the question is taking you. 
hey, it says this it. Yes, they deceive them. <clears throat> they can deceive them with, we want to give you a job, opportunity. So it's a method of recruiting them. B, can say threat. Of course, when you abduct, when you kidnap, you threaten the person, you use force. C says application, D says abduction. They can abduct them, kidnap them. Now, C, application, is not a method of recruiting them. They don't apply. Now, next question says the law protecting certain individuals from being prosecuted is called dash. Now, this question tests your knowledge on what we did in limitations to the application of rule of law. Now, remember we told you that there are some officials you cannot prosecute because the law provides that you can prosecute them that why they are in office. Uh, these officials are immune. And is, uh, A says, uh, call is called, A says penal code. Penal code is the law that deals with crimes. What constitute crimes? Now, is it constitutional protection? Is it, is what we call C, immunity clause. They have that immunity clause. So that immunity clause is the law that says that protects them, especially the president, vice president, governor, deputy governor, you can't prosecute them while they're still in office. You can only um, impeach them and make it to face that tri uh, trial for whatever things they have committed while in office. Now, this question is a dialogue between two persons. Now, it's to use the dialogue to answer the questions. Now, this one says, this person we are in putting on cap say, my mommy said that there is a reward for every good thing one does. Now, this one says, do you believe her? He replied, I do. Why do you ask? Now, the other one asks, we are you rewarded after good deed, your good deed? This one say, yes, she bought me a packet of biscuits. Now this one replied, how is that a reward when you can buy it yourself? Now the question says, we can conclude that the mother of the boy putting on cap the one that says that my mom says that there is a word for every good thing one does. So we can conclude that the boy, that the mother of the boy putting on a face cap in the cartoon and the image is A, a religious mother, B, a responsible parent, C, wealthy person, D, child activist, it's a responsible parent. This question tests your knowledge on responsible parenthood. It takes a responsible parent to encourage a child to do good things and make the child to believe that there is a reward. Now, still on the same question, <clears throat> the same image, the same dialogue, my mom said there is a reward for every good thing one does. Do you believe her? I do. Why do you ask? Um, we are your rewarded for good, your good deed. Yes, she bought me a packet of uh, biscuits. Uh, how is that a reward? Now, the effect of the interaction as captured in the cartoon, in the figure, in relation to civic education is, is it mass mobilization? There's no mobilizing somebody. There's no, nobody's being mobilized here to do a particular thing. Is it pressure group? A group of people, or an interest group organized to influence government policies and decisions in the interest of their members. Is it uh, <clears throat> peer pressure? Is it popular participation, which is the involvement in social, political, and economic activity? Rather, what is taking place here is peer pressure. You see, the other one is telling the other person um, how is pa pa a packet of biscuits a reward when you can afford it. So it's a peer pressure. It's trying to make this other one to change his mind. Now, we can make inference from the response, still using the, question, uh, the image, we can make inference from the response of the boy wearing short pants in the cartoon in the image that here, remember the one wearing short pants is the one asking, 
if a packet of biscuit is reward and whether he believes that that uh, there is a reward for good things done now the inference is this boy a needs knowledge of civic education yes he does b became industrious through empowerment c gets financial support from parents d last moral care of a responsible parenthood now in the context of civic education now this person lacks moral care of a responsible parent because the other one is quoting what the parent said this one is even in doubt about it so meaning this person lacks the moral care parents that inspire moral values Now, still using the image, which of the following is not an advisable way through which the orientation of the boy wearing short pants is in the cartoon and the image can be corrected? The question is saying which one is not an advisable way, meaning that some other questions, some other options are advisable way, one is not. Now, let's start from the, this is an effective guiding and counseling section. It's an advisable way. Remember, we are looking for the one that is not an advisable way. C says, he needs morally upright and responsible parenting. Yes, it's an advisable way to correct this person, to give him the right orientation. B says, impacting effective civic education in him, citizenship education, that will teach him about the values of our society. It's an advisable way. A says, subjecting him to a harsh, Punitive measures, of course, is not an advisable way because it can even make him hardened in what he believes. So this one is the odd one, which is the answer. Now we come to uh, we come back to normal questions. Limitations to the right of life can be found in the case of. So we are talking about what can in what circumstance can a person be deprived of their right to life legitimately now is it when the person is imprisoned now when you're imprisoned of course it's not right to life taking you're still alive B a kidnapped person C a condemned person D a trafficked person now a limitation to right to life is in the case of a condemned person that is a person who has been condemned by the court of law now, when somebody is condemned by the court of law to death, the person's right to life is limited because the person must die killed. In which of the following do citizens have equal rights? Right to it freedom of movement? Is it freedom from discrimination? Is it E, free education? Is D, form or join any political parties. Now, if you look at all these rights, they are rights of citizens. But the one that emphasizes equality is the one that says freedom of discrimination. No citizen shall be discriminated based on race, ethnicity, class, or anything. No citizen should be subject to any form of discrimination based on any factor. So B is the answer. Now, interest and willingness to participate in the affairs of a nation are forms of, is it D, citizenship education? Citizenship education is the education that trains you the right values of the society obligation as a citizen. It's not political apart, which is C, lack of interest. So this is even the opposite. The, or is it uh, B, national consciousness, the awareness of common identity shared by people of a particular country. Now, A is popular participation. That is the interest and willingness to participate in the affairs of a nation. Now, this question says, the societal norms that represent the overall attitude of the people in the society is called, is it group values? Overall attitude that represent over, is it general values? Is it religious values? Is it personal values? 
Now we are talking about personal values. This question says, my stiffest earthly assignment is ended and the major life's work is done. My country is now free. Quote from Dr. Nandi Azikiwe. The speaker quoted above must have fought hard for national. Now, if you know Dr. Nandi Azikiwe, one thing about him we know very well is that he's one of the main nationalists that fought for the independence of Nigeria. So when he says, my country is now free, we are talking about national fought hard. He fought hard for national. Is it prosperity? Which is A, no. Is it recognition? No, he wasn't fighting for recognition. Is it C, the national development? Rather, he fought for national independence. That is freedom from in colonialism. Now, this question says, <clears throat> responsible parenting has a tendency of A, encouraging egoistic tendency, B, preserving the culture of the uh, preservation of culture, C, promoting of positive values, D, promoting peaceful coexistence. Now, if you look at all this, the main one, responsible parent has the tendency of promoting positive values. Yes, it can promote peaceful coexistence, but the first is that positive value because it is through positive inculcation or promotion of positive values that we can achieve the peaceful coexistence. So that is why we talk about moral values from our parents. Now, the, this question says, which of the following is a cause of political apathy in Nigeria? Now, remember, political apathy is the lack of interest or indifference of citizens towards political activities of their state. And uh, this question tests your knowledge of the causes of political apathy which you have learned. And among the causes, you talk about uh, when you have autocratic government, you talk about a lack of good governance, you talk about election rigging and malpractices, you talk about discrimination of some people like women, you talk about poverty and many of them. Now, <clears throat> so which one is the cause? Is it A, adequate citizenship education? Is it B, a free and fair election? Is it C, biased electoral umpire? Is it D, adequate political awareness? Now, C says biased electoral umpires. Now, this one can trigger free and fair um, electoral malpractice and make people feel that their vote will not count. They will not come out to vote. This question says, representation of Nigerians in the Senate is, <coughs> is it Proportional? Is it collegial? Is it equal? Is it unequal? Now, if you remember, in Nigerian Senate, we have 109 members. Now, these members, we have three persons from each of the 36 states and one person from the FCT. Now, this option, proportional, now, proportional is more of when you're looking at House of Representative that the representation is basically on population. So that of Senate is not proportional. It's not collegial. It's not about committee. It's not unequal. Now, some people can, it can, uh, some people can look at it from the perspective, is it unequal because we have federal capital territory having only one representation and all the states having uh, territory persons. Now, it can be because the states that make up this country is what we consider more. FCT is just the capital of Nigeria. Now, the answer is equal because the upper chamber promotes equality. So that is where you have equal representation of all the states. 
Now, <coughs> this question says, identify the odd one from the list below in relation to citizenship obligation, that is the rules, the duties of citizens. Number one is, okay, which one is the odd one? Now, if you look at this option, payment of tax, which is an obligation of citizen, a right to personal liberty, it's not an obligation, right? It's a claim, a privilege of citizens. C, protection of public utilities is an obligation. It's what of things expected of citizens to do. D, obedience to the law. Of course, it's an obligation of citizens. Citizens are expected to obey the law. So the answer, which is the odd one here, is right to personal liberties because others are obligations. Why this one uh, is the right? of a citizen. According to the 1999 Constitution as amended in 2011, sovereignty belongs to the A. President, which is also the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. B. People from whom government derives its powers and authority. C. National Assembly, which has power to make laws and amend the constitution d judiciary which interpret the laws of the state now our preamble says we the people of nigeria it starts with that so as the people even normally in a democratic government which nigeria practices sovereignty belongs to the people from whom government derives its powers and authority the constitution even spelled it out now, Article 1 of Universal Declaration of Human Rights states that all human beings, remember Universal Declaration of Human Rights, uh, the first global expression of human rights uh, by United Nations General Assembly adopted in 1948. Now, <clears throat> the first article, what did it say? Now, all these things, the options are said in the 30 articles, but if you look at it, it says, have freedom, or all human beings have freedom of movement, is not in Article 1. This is have the right to recognition, is not in Article 1. C so says should be free from torture, it's not in Article 1. Rather, Article 1 says all human beings are born free and equal. That's the first article of UDHR. Now, this question says, use the quotation below to answer the question. If you cannot beat them, join them. Now, the statement is an indication of a society that is, is it, ethnic, ethically upright, that's moral, morally upright, no? B says morally degenerated. C says politically degenerated. D says socially regenerated. Now, we actually, if you say, if you can't beat them, join them we are looking at degeneration here so it's no, but it's not political degeneration if you're looking at political degeneration you're looking at things like electoral malpractices looking at corruption and system you're looking at no checks and balance you're looking, you're looking at no dividends or trappings of democracy and the state but what we're talking about here is morally degenerated society so meaning it's encouraging you to do what is morally wrong. Stay, use the quotation below to answer the question. If you cannot beat them, join them. Through The question says now, through which of the following means can the effect of the above quotation on the society be rectified? How can we correct this misconception? A says compulsory communal service. B says Strengthening of the constitution. C says reorientation of values. D says distribution of relief materials during emergency. We are not, of course, D is out. We are not talking about emergency period. E, I mean, C is the answer. Reorientation of values. Meaning that people have lost sense of our right values. Then we need to retrain them, retrain citizens on the right values of the society which C is the answer. Now, interpersonal relationship is promoted through the following ways, except that is how can we promote interpersonal relationship? 
in a state. We can do it through the, except which one is the old one? This says we start from the communal living. Of course, it can promote in the personal, run live together in unity. Cooperation, of course, promotes interpersonal relationship, working as a team to achieve common goal. Now, healthy competition can promote interpersonal relationship. Like in school, how the competition can be, I want to take first, I study hard, you want to take first position, you study hard. It's a healthy competition, and at times we can come together to share what we know. But confrontation, which has to do with violent physical means to attack somebody, or either verbally or by with your hand or whatever you're holding, is... Uh, it's not a way that can promote interpersonal relationship. An activity, this question says, an activity meant to promote and protect the interests of the country is A, utilitarianism, the utar unitarianism. Now, unitarianism is a system of government where power is concentrated in one single authority. It's not what we are talking about here. B, communism is a political and economic system in which all the means of production, are collect, uh, distribution and exchange of goods and services are collectively owned, uh, owned and uh, by the state. So it's not the answer. Is it communalism, primitive communism, which is primitive communism that has to do with an ancient society that is based on full cooperation of people now and the common ownership. Now this one is nationalism. Now, when you are talking about interests of a country, you're being nationalistic. That is why a nationalist are those that fought for our independence. This question says democracy is important because, remember, it tests your knowledge of democracy, which is a form of government, which is the supreme or governing power as in the hands of the people. And they exercise this power through uh, uh, either directly or indirectly through their elected representatives. Now, why is it important? Is A, accommodates popular participation. B, accommodates political party. Of course, democracy cannot promote political party, which is indifference of citizens towards their political affairs of the state. Uh, C says encourage operational bureaucracy. It is an administration that we talk about bureaucracy, which is even, uh, when you talk about operational bureaucracy, so even a negative concept. The, depending on the context. Now, this it brings ethnic competition and rival, which is negative. Now, democracy itself accommodates popular participation, that is involvement of citizens in the affairs of their state. That is why in democracy you talk about free and fair election, and you see people coming out to vote, joining political parties, and uh, contesting, attending campaign. So all these things are part of participation in the affairs of the state, which democracy brings about. This question says, which of the following criminal act is most commonly perpetrated by court members? Commonly <coughs> by court members. Now, this question A says prostitution. No, it's not peculiar to court, court members. B says money laundering. It's not peculiar to court members. C says corruption. It's not peculiar to court members because corruption even is mostly those in offices that can use their office for um, private gain, which is corruption. Now, what is peculiar to court is, is use of violence. The activities pe are perpetrated through violence. So violence is the one that is peculiar to courts, and that is why whenever they start the activities, it's usually violent in nature, can lead to loss of lives and property. Use the dialogue to answer the question below. <coughs> the question, now, from Tim. Tim says, Jim, let's go to hospital and confirm our HIV status. Jim replies, really? Does my face resemble that of someone with HIV. After all, I am too poor to engage in illicit sex, drug abuse, nor keep numerous partners like you do. Tim says, no, it is more than what you think, Jim. You suffer other noticeable symptoms, which makes me suspicious of your status. 
James says, okay, just to satisfy your curiosity, let's go. Now, from the dialogue, noticeable symptoms Tim must have observed about Jim include the following except so this question tests your knowledge on the symptoms of um, HIV AIDS. Now, of course, you talk about cough, diarrhea, you talk about, of course, this option A is a noticeable symptom. Profuse night sweat is there. B, persistent diarrhea is there. C, increase in appetite. This says usual fatigue. Fatigue is there. Now, increase in appetite. Rather, what we have is loss of appetite. Loss of appetite is a symptom. But the increase in appetite is not a symptom of HIV AIDS. Now, <clears throat> use the dialogue below to answer the question. Tim says, Jim, let's go to the hospital and confirm our HIV status. Jim replied, really? Does my face resemble that of someone with HIV? After all, I'm too poor to engage in illicit sex, drug abuse, nor keep numerous partners like you do. Tim says, it is more than what you think, Jim. You suffer all the noticeable symptoms which make me suspicious of your status. Jim replies, okay, just to satisfy your curiosity, let's go. Now, individual like Jim and the story Abel, who believe HIV careers are selective, can get enlightened through, how do we enlighten him? A, it's effective fasting and prayer? No, that one is prayer. Of course, it's not enlightening him. B, it says youth empowerment program. Uh, of course, youth empowerment program is about equipping one with skills. So it's not really how you can address the problem of enlightening him. Now, this is popular participation, take, that which is taking part in the face of one's control. Of course, it does not enlighten him about this. Now, to enlighten him about uh, HIV, he can get enlightenment through C, sex and civic education. Now, in sex education, we talk about some of the consequences, a, um, sexually transmitted diseases and infections, which include HIV. In civic education, we talk about emerging issues in the society, which HIV as part of it. So he needs this as a form of enlightenment. Now, which of the following is not a function of the judicial arm of government? Now, remember, the judicial arm of government is the arm responsible for interpreting the law. This is where you see the judges and the magistrate. Now, which one is, this question tests your knowledge of the functions of the judiciary. Now, let's look at it. <clears throat> a, interpretation of law, of course, is the primary function of the judiciary to interpret laws. B, judicial review, that is the power to declare the action of other, arm, of other arms of government null and void and of no effect. Now, it's a function of judiciary. Now, C, checking, uh, checking of arbitrariness, that is checking of excessive exercise of powers by the other arms of government, that the legislature, and the, the executive. Now, the, exec the judiciary pay, plays the role of checks, checking the other arms of government to prevent arbitrariness through the judicial review. Now, this is the initiation of bills. No, the judiciary does not initiate bills. It's the executive arm of government that can initiate bills. The legislatures will pass bills into law. So the answer here is initiation of bill. It's not the function. Others are the functions of the judiciary. Now, this question says, the officials of the administrative agency of the state that are most active in, or in governance belongs to the dash. Now, this question tests your knowledge of something, and that is public service. That has to do with the department, the, a concept that covers the department, the agencies, all establishment of government through which uh, policies of government are formulated and implemented. Now, they're asking you that which organ of government do they belong to? Now, is it legislative arm of government? No, they don't belong to the legislative arm of government. 
even though some of them can work under the legislative, in legislative, uh, listen, like the clerk of the house. Now, B says uh, judicial organ, no. C says the executive organ, this says civil services. Now, civil services is not part of this. Rather, what we have in uh, this thing, civil societies, rather, is not the answer because civil society are not even the government. Now, the answer is the executive arm because this official of administrative agencies of government, you talk about the ministries, not under the executive. Even, um, I mean, of course, we're talking about majorly administrative agencies, majorly the ministries and agencies of government. So they are under the executive arm of government. Now, this question says, <clears throat> one major reason some Nigerian youth join cult group is, now this question tests your knowledge of cult season. Now, why do people join cult? Now, remember you are taught many things about why people join, uh, why people join cult. Now, they also inadequate religious and moral instruction. B poor welfare programs for students, C, inadequate support from guidance and parents, D, prevalence of corruption among political elites. Actually, all this can stand as reasons Nigerian youth join cult, but they say one major. Which one is the major? Now, when there is A, inadequate religious or moral instruction which inculcates the right values in people that we shield them from joining court is number one reason they will join court. Of course, poor welfare programs for students, yes, can make the poor students to join court. Inadequate support from parents and guidance can, but the main one is when there is loss of the touch of moral values and religious values, children join court. Now, <clears throat> all the following are in of youth empowerment scheme except which one is not an aim of youth empowerment scheme now that's what I see you reduction in youth delinquency of course youth empowerment scheme reduces youth delinquency uh, some of the crimes some of the restive, restive manifestations of the youth now this is promotion of self-reliance. Yes, youth empowerment aims to promote self-reliance so that they can be self-dependent. They don't depend on people. They do things to actually get something to live on. C says maximization of profit. D says building of self-esteem. Yes, it builds once self-esteem is lifted when one is empowered with skills, knowledge. Now, the answer is C. Maximization of profit is not the reason. Now, some people may feel, hey, if you're empowered, you can start up a business, start up a productive venture, which you will make profit at the end of the day. But no, the reason is, the empowerment is to equip you with the skill. That is the primary thing train you, give you the knowledge and the skill. It's not to make profit. What you do with the skill is what will give you profit. So the aim of empowerment is not to maximize profit. Now, a situation <clears throat> we are only 35% of 80 million registered voters participated in the general election is an indication of political world. Now, this question tests when you are having just 35% of 80 million people voting in an election, a reg that 80 million registered people, it shows that people, most people are not interested in political activities of their state. Now, what do we mean by not being interested? Is it A, insta political instability? No, it does not indicate political instability. B, political exclusiveness does not. D says political socialization, which has to do with the learning and internalizing of political norms and values of the state. 
Brother, the answer is simply political apathy. We are talking about political apathy here, lack of interest demonstrated by citizens in political affairs of the state. Now, <clears throat> this question says the organizations working against dictatorship and the mounting of campaigns for effective civil rules are called that. Now, which organization are we talking about here? Now, is it professional bodies? Not really. Is it religious institutions? They do this, but not them. Is it political parties that want to form and control the government? Not really. Rather, it is civil society. Remember, civil societies, we are talking about aggregates of non-governmental organizations, voluntary groups, and interest groups that seek to promote human rights, good governance, and the practice of democracy in a state. So the answer is the uh, civil societies. Remember, by promoting good governance, they work against dictatorship and mounted campaign for effective civil rule. So it's civil society. Now, use the diagram to answer the question. Now, if you look at this diagram, it is divided into three parts. This one, this part says the presidency. This one, the National Assembly. This one is X. Now, of course, when you see here, the presidency, the National Assembly, two arms of government are represented. The presidency represents the executive arm of government. The National Assembly represents the legislative arm of government. So the X here, of course, we know the arm of government should represent, which is the judiciary. Now, in a democratic structure, the portion marked as in diagram is occupied by who? Of course, like I've said, we have seen the presidency, the executive, we have seen the National Assembly, the legislature. X will now be, is it press? No. Is it the political parties? No. Is it civil societies, organizations that seek to protect human rights and good governance? No. It's rather the judiciary. Now, with the judiciary, the three arms of government are complete. So this question takes your knowledge on the three arms of government. Now, this question says, X, uh, they um, use the diagram below to answer the question. President and see the circle divided into three. Presidency, the executive, National Assembly, legislature, X. Now, of course, X will now represent the judiciary. Now, major, the major function or activity of the occupier of the marked X in the diagram is to, <clears throat> what they do, the major function, is it they formulate policies? That is presidency, <clears throat> that's the executive. Is it make bylaws? That is under delegated legislation, the executive. Is it executive policies? That is still the presidency, the executive. Rather, what we have is interpret laws. The judiciary interpret laws because the um, part marked as represent the judiciary. Now, which of the following is not a problem of civil society? Now, we are testing your knowledge of the problems of civil to society. Now, civil society has different problems. Now, of course, which one is not? Lead a, leadership struggle is a problem. So civil society is factionalized because of leadership struggle. This person wants to be the leader, the other person wants to be the leader. So leadership struggle can even collapse civil society is a problem. Poor funding is a problem because they depend on donations from members and the voluntary donation from women in individuals. So it's not even a business that makes profit. Now, this is embezzlement of funds. Now, they have some corrupt leaders that even embezzle the small money they make from donations. Now, the answer is D, planning to capture political power. Civil societies are not planning to capture political power. They are not political parties, so it's not in their interest, so it's not their problem. Now, one major complaint against the public service is, now this question tests your knowledge of on the problems of um, public 
service. Now, if you remember, we talked about bribery and corruption, bureaucracy, retapism, um, nepotism, negative attitude to work, and many others. Now, <clears throat> let's start from this. This says rigging of election. It's not a, a problem of public service because public service is not even a political body. Um, election does not really affect it. By members are not elected officers. The C says discrimination is not really uh, a problem there. B says victimization. Yeah, there is, the people are not victimized in the public service. Now, rather, inefficiency. Now, the inefficiency is coming from one negative attitude to work of workers who don't take the worker, they work seriously. And also, it's coming from uh, the problem of bureaucracy which is excessive dependence on routine. Now, from which of the following sources are constitutional provisions not derived? Now, this question tests your knowledge on one, constitution, which is fundamental or basic law by which a country is governed. Now, and further test your knowledge on the sources of the provisions of the constitution. Now, if you look at the provisions of the constitution, you can see things like Act of Parliament or status. You can see judicial precedents or court ruling. You can see customs and traditions. You can see international documents. You can see works of scholars. You can see decree and the uh, orders. So these are the major sources. Now, which one is not? A, statutory sources. That's a statute. Act of Parliament. It, they can get it from laws made by the legislature. Customary sources. Customs of the people can form part of the provisions. Judicial precedents will refer to court rulings that are usually followed by any lower court. So they have come to occupy and form that uh, power of law. So judicial precedent is not the answer, but rather story books is not part of the provisions of the constitution. Now, the head of the judicial arm of government in Nigeria is as a chief magistrate, that's the head of magistrate court, is not the head of the judiciary. Is a chief of staff? No, chief of staff, no, it can be. It's even a member of the executive. Is it supreme leader? That one, at times you see it in Islam. Now, it's, in, uh, it's chief justice of the federation. Now, if they ask you in Nigeria at the state level, you say chief judge of the state. But since they say Nigeria, chief justice. Now, this last question says, the composition of National Assembly of Federal Republic of Nigeria could be termed, is it hierarchical? No, it's not hierarchical. B A says, is it unicameral? National Assembly has two chambers. So unicameral is a one-chamber legislature. Is it collegial? That's committee. Rather, what we have is bicameral. The composition of the National Assembly of Federal Republic of Nigeria is by camera because we have two chamber legislature at the National Assembly, the uh, Senate and the House of Representatives, which makes it by camera.